Welcome to the Nonprofit Report, your update on nonprofit organizations, issues, and leaders. I'm your host, Mark Oppenheim. Today, we will be continuing our discussion on services that are provided in Poland to Ukrainian, uh, the Ukrainian displaced, Ukrainian refugees, and Ukraine itself by talking with our special guest, Artem Zazolya, president of the Foundation Ukraine. And Artem, we are so appreciative of, of your presence and your guidance as you describe to us some of the needs that you are fulfilling. Thank you so much for joining us. So talk about your founding of the, of the organization and, and the type of services that you provide. Uh, our organizations, our organization were founded in 2013 uh, and our foundator who was uh, yeah. Honorary Consul of Ukraine, uh, Grzegorz Dzik. He is a Polish businessman and he really wanted to create some independent organization that will help Ukrainians, Ukrainian migrants uh, with uh, who, who fled Ukraine like in this first wave uh, after the start of the war, of, uh, after the annexation of Crimea and uh, the the war in Donbas when war started. So um, Poland got like uh, maybe million new uh, newcomers and and uh, a lot of cities were unprepared for for this scale of migration back in the days. and and then that that's why uh, he he created uh, our foundation and that's why we are doing like, uh, our adaptational and educational uh, activities and projects uh, for like eight years until now. And and I'm so glad you reminded us of this historical fact that uh, really the uh, Russian um, invasion of Ukraine not only started in in 2014 when the um, when the peninsula was uh, annexed. But before then, Russia was, just as had happened in Georgia, was beginning to impinge in the Donbass, in uh, the Luhansk region. And there has been an attempt that has now built to this full-on war to annex and control parts of Ukrainian territory. So your founder was responding to those displaced. And even in, in those early days, we were talking about one million people who were coming over trying to figure out how to continue their lives and and that was affecting uh, poland in a, in a very dramatic way uh, yes yes and uh, you know a lot of the majority of the people who newcomers to poland uh, back in the days they were uh, not refugees because um, like they were treated like economic migrants in Poland, so they were not, um, are they were not getting any any help like refugees. So they just were regular people who who came to Poland to work, to pay their taxes, to uh, you know um, get an apartment and everything. So they really needed a lot of help from foundations like uh, ours. Uh, to understand how to communicate with people, how to uh, operate in new reality, and and how to deal with the like normal needs and normal problems, but normal for uh, I'd say Polish inhabitants and inhabitants of the cities, and completely new for them. So initially, your services were about navigating this transition. It, it might have been connected to language. Translation. It might have been dealing with the bureaucracy, work permits, those kinds of things, getting an apartment. Correct. Exactly. Yes. Uh, the first need of any uh, any anyone who wants to be independent in new society uh, is the language barrier. So we try to to help them with that. Uh, and the next needs like education for children. Uh, education for adults, how to create your business or how to be um, treated well, I'd say, by uh, your uh, employ uh, employer, you know, because a lot of um, like a lot of problems can appear 
when uh, you came without knowing of the local laws uh, to new place. So yeah, and uh, you know this like info point that we created, for example, it worked till now because uh, like a new and new problems and questions were raised. Uh, and a new people came and from from year 2016, for example, we work not only for Ukrainian migrants and uh, refugees, but for all of migrants, because we had a lot a big migration from uh, Belarus. Uh, we had also a lot of um, workers for uh, Polish um, factories, for example, from different countries of uh, I'd say Eastern Bloc. To what extent does uh, Poland's historic experience uh, being uh, first invaded by the Nazis in 39, and then um, this, this history of being pulled apart between Germany and Russia, um, Russia then uh, eventually um, absorbing uh, Poland into um, this uh, uh, Soviet dominated uh, satellite structure, and then the uh, the uh, the change that happened around the so solidarity time. And now uh, Poland being one of the most vital democracies, uh, one of the largest economies, having its own identity and not wishing to be again pulled apart. Uh, to what extent does that inform your early work? And then. Let's talk about how your organization has evolved recently. You've already indicated some changes, but we're going to take that as the second part of this uh, of this question. You know, after after the Russian annexation of Crimea and uh, the starting the war in Donbas, um, in Poland's Polish society, there was the rise of the solidarity towards Ukraine. Uh, but I would say that all of the emotional rises there have their own like short time of life, I'd say. So uh, later, the newcomers, so economical migrants from Ukraine were treated like, uh, for example, by um, businesses, like uh, often a cheap uh, labor force and by uh, society sometimes like um, some, time, some type of, um, rival like in the uh, market of the war of labor market so right. like and it's um it's it wasn't so clear for polish maybe uh, average citizen that the ukrainians who came to Poland and uh, that poland had some higher goal and higher mission to help ukrainians to survive for example or to to stay here uh in, in for some time uh before the active part and this latest active part of, of our war um before this aggression open russian uh, aggression uh from february this year uh, so like we were treated like the same migrants like from any other country so do you feel that that because Poland and Ukraine share this, this history of, of having to deal with um, this sort of Russian appetite for controlling the, the uh, population, that that resulted in a, in a shift um, in which it's still possible to maintain a uh, somewhat positive um, relationship between Poles who might be threatened by the labor that come in, comes in from Ukraine. And because it hasn't yet turned, and it could still turn to a very negative um, uh, environment, but it hasn't yet turned and it seems to still be at a, a fairly um, supportive uh, level as witnessed by uh, your founder and, and how you are functioning within Poland. Do you feel that that, that, that is in part because the Poles appreciate that what Ukraine has gone through, Poles have gone through, and if, if it is not stopped in Ukraine, it is likely to continue on to Poland. I think, yes, yes, definitely. Uh, I think this one of the reasons, that's why Poland is the 
closest partner and the most active, I'd say, partner for Ukraine right now because uh, of our uh, similar experience uh, with uh, dealing with Russia's uh, appetites. Uh, but I think, and, and also it was like all this movement and, and the passion and, you know, energy that were created and all this help that will, that was, uh, it, it was, it was really um, unimaginable uh, scale of help. Uh, also, it was created by the fear that, you know, nobody knows what will be next, like, uh, and, but right now I see some kind of shift towards the fear of uh, some lower level uh, of your own personal um, life, work, and, and you know, like a, a lo level of your um, family's um, wealth. So uh, I think uh, that's why we should be prepared that uh, this emotional um, emotional reaction was a very good reaction, but it will end, and we we, we need to work with some really strategic and long term uh, policies, long term projects to. Um, to make Polish people understand and remember that like uh, the threat that it's coming from Russia, it's not over and the war is not over. And uh, the people who came to Poland after the 24th of February, they didn't want to came to Poland. Like uh, there were not economic migrants. There were not stealers of their jobs uh, or, or, you know, they didn't come, came to Poland to, to ride their trams and uh, trains without paying for tickets. Uh, they were forced to move here. And uh, it's like the communication, I think right now it's key, is a key and information is a key to um, counteract to all the negative reactions that we will see i, I i'm 100 percent sure that we will see this negative effects because um like it's normal for people to be scared about uh like lowering of their standards of their, their lives well and what you're actually saying is that that's part of the russian strategy it's the psychological strategy and it's the economic strategy by taking the Donbas and the ports there, you are basically creating a um, economic vassalage, so uh, an economic subservience, because Ukraine requires those ports to export its grain. Ukraine requires that area to do their heavy manufacturing. Um, Europe and the world require the food that Ukraine produces, so that creates a kind of a tariff that goes through Russian controlled territory. And by also creating refugee problems, if you can extend that for a longer period of time, you can psychologically shift attitudes within Poland and, and other parts of Europe into a negative sphere, which helps the Russians uh, in their own struggle to control that, that, that piece. So in a sense, this whole response that you're doing is a counter, it's not only supporting people, but it's also a counter to a psychological and economic uh, warfare that is going on and, and being perpetrated as part of the struggle. Is that how you see it as well? Yes, yes, sure. Like, uh, I, I really like, uh, I really like and, and want, always wanted to help people who are surround me, you know, like, and when I came to Wroclaw and when I started my uh, my job in, in foundation and previously uh, in honorary consulate of Ukraine, like a volunteer, uh, I wanted to help people here, but as Ukrainian and, you know, 80% of uh, our members in foundation Ukraine are Ukrainians who came here before 
uh, before the war uh, to study, you know, to work uh, as often economic migrants. Uh, we also really want Ukraine to be free, independent and successful country because we have our families there. Uh, we have, some of us have our future there. Like I, I really want to, uh, to work uh, for Ukraine and sometime in some time in Ukraine. So like, yes, uh, what we are doing, it's uh, 100% uh, done with like, defending Ukraine interest in mind, that it will help Ukrainians uh, to, um, it will help Ukraine to, to be a part of the civilized world and to be a good partner for Poland. It will help Poland to continue uh, their help for Ukraine because if Russia will be successful in this, uh, you know, psychological uh, campaign and uh, also this humanitarian causing humanitarian catastrophe in the Europe and Poland, so that's that's when Poland will stop helping Ukraine at this level and will be uh, forced to to deal with their own problems. So that's what we are doing right now. We are helping Poland to deal with problems with refugees, with these humanitarian problems. Also, we help Ukraine by sending a lot of humanitarian aid there. Uh, and uh, we really hope that uh, the Polish government and Europe, like governments in Europe and, and people in Europe will understand that Ukrainians uh, and Ukraine, they, they have a really, um, they all already did a lot to be a part of Europe and part of free Europe, not Russian vessel, not, not Russian colony, because we were. And we really know what it likes. And, and we don't want to be a, you know, a part of the Russian army when Russia will attack, because like it was, it was this time of the history that Russia did that, uh, attacked uh, other countries uh, in, Pol in, in, in Europe. So like we really fight for our freedom, but we also, we also try to be um, a good partner and try to be, in the, to be a part of the Europe. Uh, uh, so yes, we are working toward that goal. So if you could describe how your services today function and the range of services. And then um, if you could talk about where you see those services evolving in the future, that would just be great. In the year 2014, when I became uh, president of the board of Foundation Ukraine, we had uh, one project for like 200,000 zlotys. Uh, and was, it was the one year project and three members of foundation. And uh, what we were doing back in that back then, it was uh, some, I'd say, workshops for Ukrainian migrants, for 100, maybe 150 of them, uh, to understand the local um, rules and laws and like the basics of of uh, uh, of this Polish uh, reality. I'd say, for, which was new for them. Since then, we developed a new uh, departments. It, right now, it's seven of them of foundation uh, based and that were doing the activities and projects based uh, on the needs of migrants. And from, as I mentioned before, uh, from year 2016, for example, we started our work for um, all of the migrants. So. Uh, for example, our info point, informational point, started to consult some their consultations in four languages. It's like Polish, English, Ukrainian, and Russian for like majority of migrants uh, in Wroclaw. And since then, we grew up to one, almost 100 uh, members of foundation. Uh, also. Right now we have more than 2,000 volunteers uh, only in Wroclaw. 
and our budgets, uh, annual budgets uh, right now is on the level of uh, three to four million zlotys. So, uh, but it, wa it was a long travel, a long road for us to, and uh, right now we have a good partnership with all the branches of local government and some of uh, central government representation in our voivodeship mm, and good partners in uh, other NGOs and some businesses, uh, local businesses in Brussels. Uh, you've scaled up considerably um, over, over this time. Uh, where do you see this going forward? Because as for, as for me, this to me, this war is not going to have a quick end. I think there's going to end up being a stalemate. I don't think that the Ukrainians will give up um, territory in the Donbass and Luhansk. Whether that happens in Crimea is, is another open question, but I think that economically, it starts to make the country untenable to, uh, to um, deprive itself of its access to its ports and its productive facilities uh, down in the Southern region. Um, so this is going to continue for quite a while. Where do you see the future of your organization evolving toward? The war with Russia wasn't started this, this year or even eight year ago, eight years ago, because um, the tryings of Russia to be um, a great, a third Rome, as they call it, uh, they to be a great imperium uh, in this side of in this part of the world uh, has a long history and uh, Ukraine was uh, struggling with this uh, ambition and were, were fighting for its own independence uh, and for its own fate uh, for more than 300 years uh, so and right now we see we clearly see the biggest chance in our history to um, defend our independence, to defend our ambitions, to be a great uh, European nation and successful European nation. Uh, and against all odds, we want to uh, defend our land, our people and our future for our nation, nation for our children. So I think, um, Right now, we want to, like Ukraine wants to do that. And um, we as Ukrainians and as all, all, also Poles in our foundation, uh, we are understand that uh, this will not end uh, soon, but we are ready to a long time perspective fighting at, in our uh, field in our area, uh, and we really see the we will we will continue our uh, projects to to send humanitarian aid to Ukraine to send uh, to fundraise uh, to provide fundraisers and to send uh, equipment for uh, Ukrainian um, hospitals, for example, or for. Ukrainian cities, which will help uh, to defend their cities and to help people, uh, we will continue our uh, work here in Poland uh, with helping migrants and refugees who come in here. Also, we will really, uh, we want to help Ukrainian students, for example, youngsters who will come here to grow as the European uh, specialists, managers, and you know skilled uh, skilled people, uh, because part of part, partially they will rebuild Ukraine in the future. Uh, so um, our goal is to continue and grow uh, and to continue our. Um, activities um, toward the, I think, development of uh, the new big European nation, free European nation 
uh, and also with defending uh, the country that this nation will live in. What you're pointing out is that this is a civil society struggle for understanding, for cross-cultural, cross-border collaboration, for, um, for mutual support. Um, and that struggle is just as important um, as any other part of this struggle. If we're going to have a peaceful world, you are, you are part of it. Artem Zazolia, thank you so much for sharing the work that you have done as president of the Foundation Ukraine. And please thank your numerous volunteers, your, uh, your staff, uh, your leadership, your funders. You are doing uh, wonderful work and it is important work. If we're going to have the world that we, um, that, that we wish to live in, then we all have to behave in the way that you are modeling for us. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you uh, a lot for your attention to, to us, uh, for your sharing with the world uh, about, about uh, Ukraine and our, our deeds and our struggles. Uh, thank you for the excellent translation, uh, Mr. Yan. Uh, and I really appreciate it and uh, I wish you a good day or evening. And uh, we will build a better future for our, all of us. Thank you for your share of your job. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.